guys. So as promised for the Q&A this week, I'm going to be um, talking about uh, female pattern hair loss. The medical term for this is androgenetic alopecia. This is a follow-up to last week's Q&A wherein I addressed all of your um, questions about male pattern hair loss. So today I'll be talking about female pattern hair loss. Um, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a dermatologist. I film fun vlogs as well as lifestyle and uh, recipe videos and skincare reviews and skincare Q&As. So if this type of content interests you, I really encourage you to subscribe uh, and stay tuned for more. So female pattern hair loss is a distinct type of hair loss that occurs in women, um, also known as androgenetic alopecia. And fairly recently, I want to say, the popular uh, fitness Instagrammer Kayla of the BBG um, community, um, if you guys are familiar with her, she made it very public that she um, herself suffers from this condition, which I thought was very brave of her to, to come out and, and use her um, platform to, to give a voice to this condition because many women struggle with female pattern hair loss and it can be incredibly um, devastating and have huge psychological impact. So I applaud her for her, her very public um, coming out and, and speaking about it and, and giving some aware, raising some awareness as to this condition. You know, in fact, about 40% of women, which is a pretty large percentage of women, will show some degree of female pattern hair loss by the time they're in their 50s. Less than 45% of women actually reach the age of 80 with the full head of hair that they once had. Now, in female pattern hair loss, there's diffuse thinning of the hair on the top of the head, and it's due to a combination of um, both the androgenetic alopecia as well as an increased amount of hair shedding that sort of are occurring simulta simultaneously. And if you missed my prior Q&A a few weeks back about hair shedding um, and hair shedding postpartum, I encourage you to check out those two videos. I'll list them down below. But in female pattern hair loss or androgenetic alopecia in women, there's actually a combination of both increased hair shedding as well as an increased sensitivity of the hairs to some of the hormones that are normally present in, in all of us um, and resulting in those hairs that are sensitive becoming baby hairs very early, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. So as I mentioned, one part of female pattern hair loss is an increased amount of hair shedding, um, but it needs to be distinguished from hair loss due exclusively to an increased amount of shedding or telogen effluvium or, a, or, or actual androgenetic alopecia. So that is why it is very important if you're suffering from hair loss to seek evaluation and management by your healthcare provider to kind of help distinguish between if you are a woman who is suffering from chronic hair shedding exclusively or you're somebody who, who has androgenetic alopecia in which you have a combination of the hair shedding as well as hair loss due to sensitivity of the hair to the hormones that are circulating in our blood. Okay, so it's very important to seek evaluation and management because it needs to needs to be differentiated. But unlike the male counterpart, which I talked about last week, or male pattern baldness, in female pattern hair loss, the hair loss distribution is different. Okay, women don't lose the hair from, from this part of their head. Rather, what happens in women actually is rather than experiencing a, a receding hairline and balding balding here in the scalp, women actually experience a widening of, here I'll just part my hair, a widening of the central part of the hair. That is where their hair loss starts to begin, in, in this part here, okay? It's almost like you're, if you parted your hair down the middle, that line starts to get uh, progressively wider and wider, okay? Um, that's how it presents in women, all right? And there is, you know, I get many questions, what causes this? Does it have something to do with my hormones? So first of all, female pattern hair loss, like its male counterpart, does in fact have a strong uh, genetic predisposition. The genetics of female pattern hair loss are an area of active research and something that is ongoing, but suffice it to say, it's um, polygenetic, okay? Meaning a, a, a combination of probably several genes um, going on, um, and we haven't clarified everything yet. 
but at this time there's no genetic test that could predict um, if you're going to develop this condition later on in life. Part of what happens in female pattern hair loss is not only an increased amount of, of actual shedding of hair, but uh, a sensitivity of the hair itself to um, hormones, okay, and, and how hormones govern the hair cycle. So many people ask me, well, do I have abnormal blood hormones or should I, um, you know, be worried that my, I've got too much testosterone? The overwhelming majority of women who suffer from this condition have normal male hormone levels or, or androgens, testosterone, dihydrotestosterone. Those levels in the overwhelming majority of women suffering from this condition are in fact normal. Um, likewise, the role of estrogen, the female sex hormone, its role in, in female pattern hair loss is not entirely understood either. Um, but female pattern hair loss tends to present and be more common after menopause, suggesting that maybe the female estrogens, which are higher before menopause, have a role in stimulating hair growth. And in last week's Q&A, I touched a little bit about the normal hair cycle. Um, but we are born with all of the hairs that we're ever going to make on our head. At the time of birth, we have all that we're going to ever make. And the hairs on our head grow approximately one centimeter a month for a period of three years. Then after the growing phase, they regress during a period of time known as catagen. And following catagen, the hair involutes and is dormant. However, the hair follicle is still alive and ticking and it subsequently begins generating a new hair that will grow for three years. When it generates the new hair, it pushes the old hair out and the old hair sheds. And that cycle continues throughout your lifetime. Now, we, now unlike cats and dogs, uh, we don't shed all of our hair at one time. We shed different proportions of our hair, okay? Our hairs are all in kind of different phases of this continuous cycle. But as I mentioned, in female pattern hair loss, there is an increased amount of hair shedding. So what that means is that a larger proportion of the hairs enter the uh, resting and then subsequent shedding phase. Okay, so an increased number of hairs undergo shedding. And then what also happens is that, what also happens is that as the hair is shedding, a certain more and more of the hairs, rather than generating a new, uh, thick, coarse terminal hair, they start to uh, become presumably sensitive to the, 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 the our hormones um, and they don't quite kick off the next cycle right and they turn into a baby hair or miniaturize. And as they turn into that baby hair and miniaturize, eventually the hair appears thinner and thinner and a bald patch appears. Now many people ask me, how long does this hair shedding and balding last? When is it gonna stop? Well, as I said, female pattern hair loss most often begins after menopause. However, it can occur at any age. The hair loss process is not constant. It occurs in bursts. And it is not uncommon to have an accelerated phase of hair loss for about three to six months following a period of stability lasting about six to 18 months. And without any intervention, these bursts of shedding and miniaturization of the hair can occur for decades. And you know, dishearteningly so, our society places a great deal of value in having this youthful appearance. So much so that in women and men suffering from pattern hair loss or pattern baldness, it can be incredibly uh, devastating to one's emotional well-being. Um, there are studies showing that this can impact one's self-esteem, um, and they're fostered by this uh, heightened uh, importance that our society has on having this youthful appearance. So um, do know that you're not alone. But you should see a um, healthcare provider for evaluation and management. Part of the evaluation process should include um, checking the thyroid to make sure it's functional and female and male sex hormones. So it can be, it is part of, 
So part of the workup of hair loss does include uh, blood testing to check for female and male hormone levels as well as thyroid function. But the majority of women who have this condition do not have abnormal hormone levels. However, a subset of women with female pattern hair loss also have um, acne, and these symptoms combined with perhaps a history of irregular menses are characteristic of something called polycystic ovarian syndrome. So then what treatments are available for this? Well, there's no cure for female pattern hair loss yet, unfortunately. And the aim of, of most treatment options is to slow uh, the rate of hair loss and prolong the rate of hair growth. One of the most common modalities um, to do this is um, a application of a product or a application of a drug called minoxidil sold over the counter here in the United States by the brand name Rogaine. And as I mentioned last, last week, I will um, have a separate video about uh, all of your, addressing all of your questions about Rogaine because I get so many of them, I can't cover them all in, in this video or last week's video. So stay tuned for that, but that's usually um, you know, a recommended uh, intervention. There are also some medications by mouth that might be um, tried that can um, offset any abnormal uh, sensitivity of the hair to uh, hormones. And these include spironolactone, and in some cases, maybe a birth control pill. Probably the most, probably the uh, treatment combination that has the most data to support the, the best outcome is a combination of using Rogaine or Minoxidil along with uh, spironolactone. But uh, if that's something that has been offered to you, um, one thing um, also to understand in terms of managing your expectations is that once this combination is started, uh, it typically takes about six months to see any improvement. So, you know, don't, don't pursue it for a few weeks and then bail because you don't suddenly, uh, you know, see a, a, a market de de because you don't suddenly um, notice a market improvement. Don't bail on it um, because uh, it takes some time to work. There are also a variety of cosmetic camouflages sold over the counter and hair pieces. And there are a variety of uh, hair sprays that uh, kind of act as bulking agents, if you will. They just kind of coat the hairs that you have with uh, little fibers to make them appear thicker and the hair density to, to, um, to appear improved. And once the hair loss has stabilized, hair transplant is an option. Um, in women as well as in men, so that's another potential intervention. Um, I also get questions about low level, about la I also get questions about laser treatment for hair loss, or um, but studies have, have shown that that is not actually helpful, so that currently is not really a recommended uh, treatment. But my number one tip is to first stop see a healthcare provider for evaluation and management. A dermatologist may be necessary to further work up uh, the nature of your hair loss. Um, blood tests may be needed. And um, sometimes a skin biopsy of the scalp can be helpful. So don't try and self-diagnose this and self-treat it. See a healthcare provider um, first and foremost and discuss these treatment options with them when the time is, is right and the workup has been complete. Um, it's important to seek reliable information, um, but there are a lot of bogus claims on the internet. Um, so, you know, just be careful what you read. Um, you know, all sorts of elegant things applied to the scalp that people will try and sell you. Um, <laughs> buyer beware. But if, you are, but if you're a woman um, battling uh, female pattern hair loss, I really encourage you to check out um, a book called Bad Hair Day, A Guide to Female Pattern Hair Loss. Um, I will list it down below in the description box. It's by the author Francesca Collins. Um, it is incredibly, um, it, it is well written. It contains good information and helpful tips. Um, and I, I think it's a good read and I'm, I recommend it as do other dermatologists 
uh, to their patients. So it's a good resource. Um, it was published in 2005, so uh, you know science is is constantly changing and being updated. Uh, but I, I think that it's it's a great resource. So I'll list that down below for you guys. And stay tuned for my upcoming videos on Rogaine and uh, different treatment options for for hair loss because I get many questions on these. So. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys in the next Q&A. Bye.